Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader Review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we have the new Amazon Kindle Fire HD, the second generation model. Now, compared to the first generation, it excels in a few different ways. For one, the OS is upgraded to Mojito, and we also have a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, while the original only had 1.2. You might notice when we checked out the front of the unit, the absence of the webcam, and this is a way that they sort of reduce the cost. Other specs include a 7 inch screen, 1280 by 800, 1 gig of RAM, you have an 8 gig or a 16 gig storage option so if you want the 16 gig model it'll obviously cost more and it will last you around 10 hours. Peter, let's check out the hardware. Nothing special up front. Looks like a very standard Android tablet. We have a micro USB port on the left used to charge and transfer data to and from your device. Nothing on the bottom. 3.5 mil headphone jack on the side, nothing on the top. You have your power button on the chiseled edge, as you can see there. Your volume up and down, and the two speakers are at the bottom, one on each of the chiseled corners there. I like the way that the volume buttons actually look. It's like a bit sunken. Right. I kind of dig that sort of style. And if you notice on the back, it's not like a flat design. It actually has like these little angular grooves, which I find aesthetically pleasing at least. Let's take a look at the software. This is the main UI of the second generation Kindle Fire and side by side it actually looks a whole hell of a lot better than uh, the original version. I think that Amazon's really kind of gone to town in terms of making the app icons higher resolution. And if you notice everything here, it looks really good. You notice a little bit of white border there. That's the audiobook edition. Scrolling up, you can actually see the app icons. And on the earlier model, you actually had to click a separate button. So I like how it's a little bit more intuitive now. And you can actually see your full list of apps by clicking on the top corner and just selecting apps. So you can check out all of the default apps that came with your unit, as well as side-loaded apps and apps that you have either purchased or downloaded for free from Amazon. Now, this is built as an e-reading tablet. So first and foremost, it's the e-reading experience that's the most relevant. So let's check out an e-book. So we've loaded up Sycamore Row by John Grisham. I almost didn't know how to pronounce that, so excuse my hesitation. Um, page turns, obviously we're on a tablet, not an e-reader, so it's going to be very quick, very fluid. If you tap, you will have a bunch of options at the top. You can change your text via the ups and downs. And everything's live on the screen. You have your text modes, you have your margins, and your line spacing, if you want to space things out a bit. You also have some font styles. We have Helvetica, Cecilia, etc. We also have X-Ray. This is a really useful feature. It will tell you terms, people, characters, all that kind of thing throughout the entire book, and it will tell you how many times they are mentioned. Now, it's important to note that X-Ray only works with books purchased from Amazon. If you sideload in your own books in Mobi, PRC, AZW format, X-Ray will not be compatible. Exactly. We also have notes and highlight capabilities, so you can long press. This starts off a highlight. You can drag this anchor, like so to create a highlight and we now have different colors unlike the old Kindle Fire we did not have that we also have notes nice keyboard pretty much the same as the last Kindle Fire predictive text which is always useful yeah that's always it's always good save you see our note there we have bookmarks and we have the definition there and you can also share to Facebook see the full definition and you have search in book, Wikipedia, search in the web, and of course, translate like you have on the Kindle Paperwhite. You can translate the language to any other language. So within seconds, you can basically translate an entire book to any language you choose. 
Now, one of the cool things about the synergy between Audible and Amazon is that a, a lot of books actually have what's known as Whisper Sync for Voice or Immersion Reading. And this will actually do a number of things if you purchase the audiobook and the ebook edition, as we have in this case. So let's check that out. If you tap in the middle, you'll notice that there's a little play button on the bottom. If you click that, to the rope. Within hours, it would be known that Seth Hubbard had attended the 11 a.m. worship service at a nearby church. He had spoken to acquaintances. So you can see it's actually reading along with you as it highlights the words. Yeah, it's, it's a cool kind of feature. Not all books have this capability, but a number of best-selling titles and new titles actually have it. So if you're a fan of mainstream fiction, there's a lot of options there for you to be able to engage in. So we've taken a look at the ebook experience. Let's take a look on how the magazine experience looks. Okay, we have a magazine open here, Popular Science, and it is in landscape mode. Certain magazines work in landscape mode, some portrait. This is a great one. As you saw, it has a bit of an animated page churn with the ability to peek. Just one of those small things that actually make reading on a tablet a little bit more interesting than, say, reading on an e-reader, which is more or less like a static experience. Tell us what type of options that we have here. It's looking really nice as it stands. If you double tap, we'll go to a full page here. If you double tap, it initiates a zoom. You can then kind of go around with your navigation. You also have pinch and zooming capabilities. It doesn't let you go too far in. It's not the Microsoft Surface here, but you know, it's 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 enough to really you know, read what you need to read. I mean, you wouldn't be able to zoom in on that on a real magazine, so consider yourself lucky that you get that at all. If you tap in the middle, we have a couple things. We have browse. Once again, on a real magazine, you don't have this luxury of having a thumbnailed table of contents at your um, at your leisure here. You can then click on something and go right to that. We also have bookmarks, so you can add that to your bookmarks, like so. So page whatever of this particular magazine has now been bookmarked. Looks great. Now let's take a look at the New York Times newspaper. Well, the one thing that Amazon does is when you actually download newspapers and it affects their apps. Newspapers on Amazon come in a few different flavors. Some are dedicated apps and some are Kindle editions. So we're looking at the Kindle edition of the New York Times seminal newspaper. You can see here that we're clicking on the articles so you could click exactly on an article if you want to read it and go right to it. There's a picture. You more or less turn it like you would an ebook. And because that this is a Kindle edition, you can augment the text and everything exactly the way that you would on an ebook. So you can find that sweet spot in terms of your font selections, making the text a little bit larger. You can take notes and you can also translate, which is also useful. So if you speak a different language but you still want to read the times you can read it like this which is fairly good and it actually odd via audio actually give you an audio translation which is cool no trendies so kind of Pretty a bit cool. of yeah a bit of a robot voice but uh, such is life okay now what i want to do is look at the video experience so what we're going to do is fire up netflix and give you a sense on how the speakers actually come to life in conjunction with the video. Let's look at some of the new features found on the second generation Kindle Fire. One of them is photos. Now earlier versions of the Kindle Fire tablets actually got a firmware update but they don't present it the same way as they do here. So what you can do is you could establish your phone number and you could establish your Facebook account and it'll actually fetch photos from all of your different social media networks and actually put them on here. It looks different in landscape than it does in portrait mode, but I find it's pretty cool because it can actually 
uh, give you a different way to do photos uh, depending on how the photo was shot, with a, whether it was on an SLR, whether you took the photo on your iPhone in, say, a portrait mode, different photos will look differently. But I kind of dig that the way that it handles photos. So if you're a photo bug and you take a lot of them, it's kind of cool that you could sync up to your iPhone and then you could also sync up to your Facebook account and really establish everything. Uh, one of the other features are found on here is Kindle free time and this is an option for parents to establish permissions uh, in order to really kind of make this a little bit more kid friendly so you see we have a portrait uh, profile named john just as a tester So you could, under your parent account, establish books for your kid to look at. So we just put a joke book here. We also have we also have um, you have a video section. You have apps. So we're allowing John to play <laughs> Angry Granny Run. So. So it's kind of like a. It's kind of like the OS, except just for the kid. It's very slim down, so you just have a few tabs. If you drag from the top down, you could exit free time, but you could also access the parental settings, which is where this is where you would establish a lot of settings. Um, how, mu how, off how much do you want to allow them to read for? How much do you want them to be able to play games for? How much do you want them to play videos for? So you could allow them to, say, have five hours of reading, but maybe one hour of watching videos. And this way, it's... I, I like this option better than just saying, Hey, John, you've been using this tablet for two hours. I want it back now. No, Mommy, five more minutes, you know? This way, you could establish, you know, set permissions, which I think is cool. Or you can put a password there and see if they'll ever be able to guess it to get access to all the good stuff. <laughs> right. Oh, another option is quiet time. And this is only found on the, the new model of the fires. So now that we're back to the full OS, you'll see that we have a quiet time symbol there. If you click that, you have initiated quiet time and how to change all these options is you go to setting settings and then notifications and quiet time you'll actually have all your apps installed and you can choose whether to allow them to play notifications or sounds or both or none to each individual app uh, by default, it just shuts everything down. So this helps with the immersion reading process. If you've ever read on a tablet before, especially say like an iPad, you're constantly being bombarded with email notifications, game notifications, things like birthdays from Facebook, calendar notifications, and it can kind of detract you from that reading experience where just as you're getting into a book, boom, you know, you're getting all these things and it's like, oh, I was expecting this email, I should read it. And then, you know, you're, the likelihood of you getting back into that book as profoundly as you were before the notifications started, I, I dig this kind of feature. And it's very similar to uh, Kobo's reading mode. One of the final new options is Mayday, and this is a way that you could initiate uh, a one-on-one -on -one connection with an Amazon rep, and they'll help you with common tactics. So if you ask them, you know, how do I access my eBooks? They can actually draw diagrams. They could actually on their end highlight things for you, so they could say, okay, they they could put a circle around the home button, press home then click on books and then you can access your books and they can kind of really help you solve a lot of the most common issues. Um, so if you say, you know, how do I establish Kindle free time parent permissions? They could actually open the app for you and click on things and it could really help you. And this is really a fresh new feature that we've not really seen on tablets before as like a stock option. Finally, let's just take a look at some of the, you know, the shop, the games, and the app sections. So just so you can get a sense on presentation and layout. So this is the main hub for the store. You can actually move things around like this. However, if you want to dive a little deeper, each kind of division has their own 
separate store. So the bookstore will look different than the game store, than it will from the video store, and so forth. So you see you have a lot of books here. They're using making good use of the space with the kind of scroll uh, horizontal scrolls. If we click on a book just to see what we have in terms of information, you have buy, download a sample, customers who bought this also bought these, and so on. And if we go to, we're going to start from the games tab, so we'll show you the games and then move into the store. So you can see here's our games we have. And then if you click store, the game store is actually going to look different than the bookstore. So when we click shop initially, that's just the main hub. So you see we have the scrollers of the featured stuff. And then we have top free, top paid, and so on. Apps is just your your list of apps. And once again, if you go to the store, you are dealing with a completely different look from the first two. This one actually shares with the game section. But if we go to, we already looked at books. If we go to music and click on store, once again, entirely different. So they've kind of made their own store for each section, which is kind of cool, actually. Most of the sections look very much akin to this, so we're not going to look at all of them, but just know that uh, presentation and layout kind of different between uh, section to section. One of the more interesting things about videos is Amazon Video, especially the Instant Video, Prime Video, they only work in certain markets. So it'll allow you to actually purchase something, download it to your unit, but when it actually comes to watching it, if you live in Canada, say like we do, you'll be unable to watch it. Now you can bypass this by actually setting up a VPN uh, on your Kindle Fire and we'll do a dedicated tutorial video that shows you how to do that um, and that will allow you to both watch and purchase videos in international markets so you could go to shopyreaders.com for further info on that so all in all Peter what are your thoughts on this second generation Kindle Fire I don't think they did a lot with the hardware they actually got rid of the HDMI port out they completely scrapped that the screen size is the same the resolution is pretty much the same um, neither of the this generation or the last one had SD cards, so you're you're set you're restricted to fixed storage. But all in all, I like the build quality of this a lot more. It's slimmed down, it's lighter, it's more compact. I like the chiseled edges. The one major complaint I have about this, the sound quality and volume, even on max between this one and the last generation, completely noticeable. This is about half as quiet and half as clear as the past generation. Kindle Fire HD, even though they're running the same dual stereo speakers. Yeah, I mean, I really dig this. Even though it's running Android, Amazon has crafted yet another very unique experience when you compare this to, say, the Barnes Noble Nook line, the Kobo line, as well as just vanilla Android tablets. If you live in the US, UK, and other markets that Amazon fully supports, this is a great tablet. If you live in international markets, you're kind of limited on what type of media that you can purchase and consume. You have to kind of jump through a number of hoops like VPN services, um, you know, international U US based credit cards, and things like that. Uh, in the end, though, I I'm a big fan of this. It's a low price for its entry point, and you can get a ton of content. I mean, if Amazon does anything well, they give you a ton of content and very unique ways to be able to go about consuming the content and kid-friendly, parent-friendly features and things like that. You've heard our thoughts. Let's hear yours. You can drop a comment on this YouTube video and give us your thoughts, and we'll address them all. If you have any ideas for future videos, uh, if you want us to show you comics, if you want us to show you side-loading apps and how-tos, drop a comment, and we'll do this for you. And for a review on a second-generation Kindle Fire HD, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.